In this question, we see a balloon with a basket or a gondola, and it looks like it's tied to the ground at an angle. So it's just before takeoff. It's attached to the ground by two fixing ropes. The force vertically upwards, which is the force buoyant, is 2.15 times 10 to the third, or 2,150 newtons. And the mass of the balloon in the basket is 195 kilograms. <clears throat> State the magnitude of the resultant force on the balloon when it is attached to the ground. So the first thing we know is that this is um, <clears throat> the net force or resulting force is MA. A equals zero, therefore F net equals zero. It's not accelerating. So if acceleration is zero, the net force is zero. The net force is the resulting force, so therefore it's zero. Next, we are asked to determine the tension in either of the fixing ropes. And that's bolded because we only need to find one. So let's start with our, with a free body diagram. If we have our balloon, there is the force buoyant, which is 2,150 newtons. We know there is always gravity acting on it. So that is Fg equals Mg. 195 times 10 is 1,950 newtons. So this is minus 1,950 newtons. But there is also force acting downward um, from the pull of the rope. And so there is a tension like this, and there is a vertical component, TZ, and there is a horizontal component, TX. We know this angle is 50, and this one is 90. What we are looking for is this TZ, but there are two of those TZs. Thus, if we are looking for the tension, <clears throat> In the rope, we need to find TZ. Well, the sum of the forces, or the net force in the vertical direction, is the force buoyant minus the force of gravity minus two times the force of tension in the Z direction. F net Z is MAZ. And the buoyant force is 2150. Force of gravity is 1950. And that's minus 2 FTZ. The acceleration is zero. So we have zero being equal to 200 minus 2 FTZ. So 2 FTZ equals 200. And therefore, FTZ is 100. That gives us our vertical component of 100. Now it's a matter to find the tension. If we use the 50 degree angle, this is the opposite side, adjacent side, and hypotenuse, so we might use sine. Sine of 50 is Tz over T, and Tz, excuse me, we're looking for T, then T is Tz over sine 50. And Tz we know is 100, so it is 100 over the sine of 50. Going to our calculator, 100 divided by sine of 50. 130.54. Tz is, or T is, 130.54 newtons. We go back to our pair, our triangle to see 130. The hypotenuse should be larger, and it is, so we know we're fine there. And that is the tension in either rope. So that's 130, that's 130, like so. We might, in this case, then number things to keep it easier for our person who's rating it for us. We start out here with one, and then two, and then three, then four, then five. And we have our boxed answer, like so. 
with the correct number of significant digits, which should be three because of 215 and 195, we have a tension of 131 newtons, which is our final answer there. Moving on to this part, the ropes are now released and the balloon accelerates upwards. We want the initial acceleration. Well, of course, governing this is Newton's second law, so we need to know the net force is the sum of the forces. The net force is MA. And what forces do we have? We have the force buoyant and we have the force of gravity. So we have the force buoyant minus the force of gravity. <clears throat> MA is then equal to 2150 minus 1950 all over the mass, which is 195. Now let's keep that cleaner and use another line. Acceleration then is 2150 minus 1950 over 195, which is 200 over 195 and that works out to be 1.03 meters per second squared is the acceleration. One, two, like so. Question D, reaches a terminal speed. Terminal speed means the acceleration equals zero, therefore the net force equals zero. And it takes 10 seconds to do that. The upward force remains constant, so FB remains 2150. Describe how the magnitude of air friction varies. So in the beginning, when it's released, we have a force buoyant of 2150 and the force of gravity, 1950. So we have a net force of 200 newtons. But, and this is, at, this is at time zero. And at the final time, we know the net force is zero. So that must mean that the force buoyant, the force, the, the other force <laughs> is, is 200, but we, we have our force buoyant. Let me just start that over. We have our tension. We have our force buoyant, which is 2150. We have a force of gravity, which is 1950. We must have another additional 200 newtons such that they add up to zero. F net zero. So, how the magnitude of the friction varies during the first 10 seconds of flight. The air friction is proportional to the velocity squared. At time equals zero, V equals zero and increases over time. Therefore, the F air increases from zero to 200 newtons, the force necessary to balance the force buoyant and force gravity when it reaches terminal velocity.